Alright guys, so today we're going to be checking out some of the most requested videos on the server. Now, the one thing I don't want to do, just really don't want to, is to, you know, put multiple videos out from one creator in a single day. Uh, that's just a personal preference of mine. Um, the funny thing about it is, though, the top 20 is nearly all SCP. So, what do you think we're going to be watching today? It's going to be a lot of SCP. So, the first up today is from the Exploring series, and it's Exploring the SCP Foundation, Marshall, Carter, and Dark LTD. And this was requested by Professor Hazard Anderson, and yeah, I know nothing about what I'm about to see, because although I have been watching a lot of SCP, I've never even heard this mentioned once. So this is going to be interesting to find out about, and it's just going to be something we add in to, well, everything that we're learning here. So, I just, I, I love doing this. It's like, boom, I love it. Okay, so, let's get into it. Exploring series. Marshall, Carter, and Dark, Limited. Okay. If you've been following this series up to this point, you've learned about a number of different groups and organizations within the SCP universe. True. There's the SCP Foundation itself, of mm -hmm. course, and their goal of containing and researching the anomalous in order to protect the status quo. There's the Global Occult Coalition, who share similar goals to the Foundation, but care less about containing anomalies if they threaten the safety of mankind. There's also the Church of the Broken God and the right. Sarkic Cults, who blend the anomalous with religion as part of a vast war for the sake of the planet. And to be honest, those were the ones that freaked me out the most because they're trying to bring, uh, what is it, the church of the, no, the Sarkis, they're trying to bring the end of all by using the flesh that hates. That's just never a good idea. But now we get to Marshall, Carter, and Dark, who utilize anomalies not for altruism or some grand goal, but simply for profit. Mm. Much like anything perceived to be rare and valuable, there are those who would profiteer off of it and anomalies are no different. M, C, and D have been involved in a large number of anomalous objects known to the Foundation, so this video will go over their basic history and some of the notable examples. Okay. So, a big question might be who exactly are Marshall, Carter, and Dark, the individuals who presumably founded the organization? Once again, the lack of canon rears its head. <laughs> And the three individuals are hardly public figures, so it's not an easy question to answer. The Wills and Ways series of tales presents them as Amos Marshall, Ruprecht Carter, and Percival Dark, and they have extended their lives anomalously by decades at least. It's occasionally referenced in a few tales and articles that Dark is the true founder of the organization, and is far older and more mysterious than the other two. Although, again, this is not necessarily true. You know what? Anytime I see something like this, I'm reminded of Fallout. And anytime I'm reminded of Fallout plus SCP, the brain starts going in bad directions towards things that you've seen before. SCP-2463 and the accompanying documentation discuss six small bronze horse statuettes. Okay. They have the capability of converting any water from a natural source into petroleum. These statuettes apparently originate from the 3rd century, when Roman Emperor Valerian, while captured by the Persians, contacted an individual known as D. Mercator, implied oh. to be dark, and asked for something that would utterly destroy his enemies. D. Mercator contacted one of his sources, who supplied the six statuettes, but Valerian died before he could utilize them. Okay. Mercator wrote a letter to Valerian's son, the current emperor, informing him of his father's business deal and telling him that the statuettes will be held by Mercator's organization unless he could pay a sum of 60 million gold coins. An exorbitant amount. Uh, yeah, a little bit. The documentation shows that this amount was never paid. And so the statuettes were sold and repurchased a number of times to different individuals, such as one of the founders of Baghdad, before being eventually confiscated by the SCP Foundation. 
Regardless of how Marshall, Carter, and Dark came together, they've certainly been doing this for some time now, and they've managed to keep their identities and operations pretty secretive. So what I'm gathering so f- and I'm probably wrong with this, I'm probably going to get proved wrong with this, they collect SCPs that aren't living per se. But what are their operations? As 2463 showcased, MC and D buy, find, or otherwise acquire certain strange and unusual objects, mainly those that the SCP Foundation would classify as safe, Mm. and then proceed to sell them, often at auctions to the highest bidders. They don't especially care too much about who they sell these objects to, as long as they're rich and powerful, although there are certain exceptions to who they'll sell to. Okay. The documentation for 2463 shows MC and D bidding on one of their own items to prevent the Mana Charitable Foundation from purchasing it, as they likely wanted to take it out of circulation. The MCF is an organization that uses anomalies to try and benefit the world. Hmm. The Serpent's Hand present a much larger threat to their operations, however, a group devoted to spreading awareness of the anomalous and taking down the veil of secrecy. Although organizations such as the Foundation... Yeah, I bet everybody gets along with that group. ...and the GOC are opposed to MC&D's operations, they can't quite compete with their level of economic power. And ultimately, there are better ways for them to spend their time and efforts. Although MC&D possess a vast amount of wealth and control, and could easily plunge the world into thermonuclear war, they choose to use this power to simply gain more wealth. It's said that around 100 people specifically work for MC&D at any given time, running a highly efficient operation. But they will occasionally outsource some work to other organizations if necessary. They acquire their products through various means, primarily from purchasing items directly from anomalous creators, such as Dr. Wondertainment and the Factory. They will also- Now I've heard about this guy, and frankly, he kind of creeps me out just by this drawing, because this is just not right. So trade with Prometheus Labs and obtain art exhibits from Are We Cool Yet? Are we what, what? They then sell these items across the world and they claim the Chaos Insurgency is one of their biggest clients, a group that uses anomalies for personal benefit, Mm. often weaponizing them. Let's discuss some of the interactions that MC and D have had with the SCP Foundation Okay. to give you perhaps a better idea about the group, although keeping in mind these documents are written from the Foundation's perspective. As mentioned, most of the items that MC and D deal with are considered safe by the Foundation, but that does not mean they're harmless, right. and the group generally cares little for ethical concerns. SCP-604, The Cannibal's Banquet, is one of the more grotesque examples. Okay. This SCP is a set of tableware, dishes, and glasses that, when an edible substance, primarily animal matter, is placed on or in them, turns into human flesh or bodily fluids. The transformation will be the closest approximation between the two, so fleshy steaks will become cuts from a human thigh, That's disgusting. and red wine will turn into human blood. That's really disgusting. These transformations are limited to the size of the dish, so most pieces will transform into an infantile equivalent, such as chicken wings becoming tiny burnt infant arms. Oh my god, come Placing on, Placing items man. vertically on the dishes does allow for larger growths such as placing a snake upright on a dish and it turning into a human throat and mouth. Oh, God. Marshall, Carter, and Dark acquired the item from a secluded monastery. Like, seriously, get the hell out. Derry, that was using it to practice the rites of communion. Really? Believing it to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Well, got news for you. After MC and D acquired it, they began using it as an exhibit in a restaurant, offering it to certain members as a chance to safely test the waters of cannibalism. Another trait of SCP-604. No, man. This is why we can't have nice things. ...is that if any still living material is placed on its surface, it will transform into a moving human body part, such as a starfish turning into a six-fingered baby's hand 
Why? It flex its fingers. Oh, God, man. This Come phenomenon on, man. was highly desired by MCD's clients. And so kittens, puppies, and small monkeys were often used with continued efforts on their part to create a human head capable of intelligent speech. Another example of their morals, more lack there. See, this is why people have too much damn money. You're spending money on this shit. Rub is SCP-1660, Unearthly Forest. 1660 is a relatively small parallel universe, okay. accessible only by lighting a special decorative lamp and stepping through a gate the smoke produces. The universe seems to consist of a large forest, surrounded by an extremely durable wall around and below it, and the sky above it seems to contain a layer of highly dangerous gases. The forest is filled with different flora and fauna, some familiar to our world, such as brown bears and deer, and other things unique to 1660, such as cougar-like creatures capable of echolocation, hmm. and some sort of bioluminescent armored cross between a reptile and a man. You guys hear this? You guys hear this? The hospital steps out for two seconds and then this happens. And the dog loses his mind like she just vanished into the thin air. Camel, two meters in length. These creatures possess four paws, jointed like human hands, and are also sapient, having created simple tools, fire, and their own language. Oh boy. Their cave paintings seem to show images of them being hunted by humans. Cave paintings? And then another set of humans that saved them, wearing the SCP Foundation symbol. It seems that MC and D was using 1660 as a hunting grounds for Lovely. clients, and now the sapient creatures worship the Foundation as their saviors. Lovely. MC and D aren't always morally bankrupt madmen focused solely on profit, however. That's how power claws were formed for 40k people, there you go. However, as SCP-2501 shows. 2501, the claw, is a large mechanical gauntlet seemingly created by Russians prior to the 1960s. Okay. And its functions are permanently turned on with no way to alter or disable them. When an individual wears the gauntlet, they are... Okay, come on, now we're just stretching. It's something from Soviet Russia that actually works? ...are capable of exerting immense pressure on any object within sight simply by holding the gauntlet in front of them and squeezing the claw so that the object is between it. This oh. pressure is capable of crushing a soup can from a meter away, flattening a tank from 200 meters away, and potentially even crushing asteroids or planets. How MC&D acquired this item is unknown, and they apparently sold or lended it to a few clients before deciding it was simply too dangerous. Yeah, you think? Rather than risking a wealthy individual try to flatten the sun, they shipped it off to the SCP Foundation for safekeeping. Although there isn't much love between the two groups, they acknowledge that the Foundation are simply better at keeping dangerous things safe and contained. Mm -hmm. SCP-2776 is another interesting example of the potential power that MC&D can wield, okay. and their capabilities of affecting history. 2776 is essentially a lifelike automaton resembling George Washington. This robot contains some prosthetic features available in the 1700s, such as glass eyes and false dentures, but also possesses some highly advanced features, such as armored plating and a small fusion reactor. Oh, this is going to be great. Letters recovered reveal that MC&D created 2776 using the corpse of George Washington, who died while still an officer in the French and Indian War. What? Apparently, the colonists needed both an inspirational leader as well as more firepower, and so MC&D supplied both with 2776. <laughs> George Washington in the SCP Universe's Liberty Prime. One of their employees, named Martha, was assigned to maintain the automaton, and he was given an estate away from prying eyes to avoid people discovering his true nature. After winning the Revolutionary War, 2776 was put into a standby mode, 
until he was recovered in 2007 by the SCP Foundation. 2776 was not aware of his mechanical nature, and eventually broke containment after watching a television program describing a buyout of an American company by a British company. His core began emitting massive amounts of gamma radiation, and he killed everyone in his path as he moved towards London until he was oh recontained. Oh my god. It's hard to look at Marshall, Carter, and Dark and see them as anything close to good, but it is easy to see them as realistic, at least as far as an SCP universe is concerned. Merchants taking the rare and valuable and finding a profit with them have existed for thousands of years. True. But it makes sense that anomalies would be no different. While the SCP Foundation and the GOC will continue to raid MC&D facilities and reclaim objects, they don't make a grand effort to wipe them out, either. Perhaps this is because of instances like SCP-2501, where they know that there are worse groups for anomalies to end up with, and hope MC&D still bring the really dangerous items to them. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps they realize that going to war with MC&D would be a lot like poking a bear with a stick, and cause quite a bit of trouble for both sides. Yeah, you're talking, like, th this thing's major... This organization's major power is its, is its wealth, and there have been there have been instances in the past where people wouldn't dare touch certain certain groups, certain organizations, just because of the pure wealth they had. Even though the monstrous amount of um, military might they could bring to bear against them, it just wouldn't be worth it in the long run. So I see this. Either way. MC and D have dealt with the rich and powerful for a very long time, amassing quite a fortune. And as they say, money makes the world go round. Okay. Mm. And here's his quote. Without question, Marshall, Carter, and Dark are one of the most important pieces on the chessboard of the anomalous world, occasionally putting other players into check, but never into mate. For Marshall, Carter, and Dark, the planet is an intricate network they have secured safely beneath their thumb, where winning and losing are meaningless terms. There is no need to move pieces when you can move the board. When you can end the match at any time, there's only one reason to continue. It's all about playing the game. I love that. I don't know where he gets these from, but each one of them has been very, very accurate to whatever he had presented at the time. I really do like the Exploring series, uh, their, their way of putting lore out there. It feels less like lore and more than a story. And I love the quotes at the end. Each one of the SCP channels that I really, really have enjoyed have different things about them that just set them apart from the other. The Vulgan with his, the way he delivers things and his voice acting. SCP Illustrated with his voice acting and the illustrations, of course, that go along with them. And then you have the Exploring series, whose the, their method of putting stuff out is kind of like an interesting mesh between the two. In any case, like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. I'm going to be putting all the Exploring series links related to SCP in the description down below, as well as my own, including like all my social media links, which I, I promise I'm going to get back to at some point. I just have to figure out how I'm going to do things. And that is my, I need, I need to put that on a shirt. I'm figuring out how to do this. It just is what it is. So now I know Marshall, Carter, and Dark. Basically the auctioneers of the SCP universe. I love it. I, I absolutely love it. All right. Until next time, guys. Whatever you guys do today, have fun doing it. I'll catch you guys next time.